Hello students, welcome to 6.3, tests for parallelograms. In 6.2 you learned properties of parallelograms. Now we are going to use theorems to prove things are parallelograms. So at the end of this lesson you'll be able to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram and that a set of points forms a parallelogram in a coordinate plane. First off, have your theorem books out. We've got to go over a few theorems. As always, I'm going to highlight that hypothesis. If both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Um, in 6.2, we went over some theorems that about properties. So basically, these are the converses. So before, if it was a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. Now we're saying if opposite sides are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. 610, same type of thing. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. Um, 611, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, which means they would have the same midpoint, um, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. This one's a little different. It says if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. All right, so you can just focus on one set of sides, not both sides. All right, um, example number one, is this a parallelogram? Justify your answer. All right, well, quadrilateral, um, I've got sides, so we're looking at anything that was sides, and I've got two sides, and I noticed that this one says, both set of opposite sides are congruent. Oh, both sets of opposite sides are congruent. That's the hypothesis. So yeah, um, it is a parallelogram. That's theorem 6.9. Um, in the next example, I've got opposite angles, um, but I don't have both sets of opposite angles. I've got opposite sides that are congruent. Um, I, are they parallel? Uh, no, no, they're not parallel. We don't know that. Um, are the other sides congruent? No, we don't know that either. So in this one, we don't have enough information. All right, we only know one set of opposite sides, 6, 9. Um, they're not parallel, 6, 12. And then the angles, we only know one set, so that's 6, 10. Um, so we're going to get into some coordinate proofs, and that's just basically using coordinates um, or a coordinate grid to help us prove. So it's not formal, um, like the two-column proofs. But basically, you can prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram um, by showing both pair of opposite sides are parallel, and that's the definition. So remember in 6.2 we talked about the definition. It's a quadrilateral with opposite sides that are parallel. So if they're parallel, then it's, then it's a parallelogram. Um, you can use this, um, and I would write this down. Actually, you don't have the definition in your um, theorem book. I would suggest writing that down and then also writing down, hey, the slope formula. You can use the slope formula to prove the definition. Right, if opposite sides, both set of opposite sides have the same slope. Um, you could also show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, and that's the theorem 6.9. To do that, you would need to use the distance formula. You would use it on all sides, and you need to show both pair of opposite sides have the same length. So maybe in your theorem book by 6.9, parentheses, write the, dis the distance formula. That's the one you need. All right, the next one. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Now, there's not a formula or anything that's going to help you that with this on a coordinate proof, all right? But this might come up in a two-column proof. In that case, you just need to show that both pair of opposite angles are congruent. Right. Um, to show that the diagonals bisect each other. For this one, you would use the midpoint formula. You'd have both the diagonals in a parallelogram, all right? You'd use the midpoint formula on both of them and show that they have the same midpoint. Okay. Or you could show that a one pair, and this is theorem 612, of opposite sides is both parallel and congruent. All right. In that case, you need to use the slope formula and the distance formula. Show that one pair of sides has the same slope and the same length. Example 2. Prove that ABCD is a parallelogram using 6.12. First thing we probably want to do, all right, plot your points. I've got a negative 5, negative 1, going to B, which is negative 2, 3. All right, going from B to C, which is at 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
6 right out here. Okay. And from there, I'm going to D, which is at 3. 1, 2, 3, negative 4. And then back to A. All right, and we want to um, label your point. All right, so we've got our labels. So first thing, this says theorem 6.12. Right, now that means we need to show one set of sides is both parallel and congruent. All right, using our notes, we know we need to use the slope formula, first of all. Parallel, all right, the slope of AB. Now, you can plug in your points on your um, formula here, your slope formula, or you could, because I plotted, I can just count. Rise over run. From A to B, I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4 up, 2, 3 to the right. So my slope is, whoops, I don't want a highlighter. My slope is 4 over 3. All right, and then I do need to do the same for CD. If I'm going from C to D, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the left, 3, 1, 2, 3. So that's negative 4 over negative 3. Well, negative divided by a negative is a positive, so it's just 4 over 3. So they have the same slope, so we can show that they're parallel. All right, well, we also need to use the distance formula. You should have the distance formula written down. If you don't, write it down somewhere in your theorem book. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. The sum of those, square rooted, all right, plug it in. So we're going to start out with ab, all right, and I'm plugging in my points. All right, I use this as my um, x2, y2. This is my x1, y1. Point B, plug it in. All right, this is turns out to be negative 3 squared is 9. This is negative 4 squared, 16. 9 plus 16, 25. So AB is the square root of 25, which is 5. So I know AB is a length has a length of 5. Let's take a look at CD. 6 minus 3 is 3. 0 minus negative 4 is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. This is the square root of 25 which is also 5. All right, so we have proved it because they have the same length, they're parallel, and congruent. So by 612, we could say that this is a parallelogram. Um, determine the coordinates of point Z that would make W, X, Y, Z a parallelogram. All right, well, ooh, we've got variables here. Okay, first W is 0C. Well, 0C we know is somewhere on the y-axis. We would go 0 right there, um, and it's a positive c, so I'm guessing up here. x. Oh, x is negative a, but still on the axis there, on the x-axis though. So it's in the negative area over here. y is positive b, 0, and then z is somewhere else. So I'm going to plot what I know, and I'm just going to pick kind of an area. I, I don't know exactly where c is. I think it's up here. I don't exactly know where a is. I think it's up here. I don't exactly know where b is. It's over here. All right, well, um, right away, okay, we see that we've got, we need parallel lines. By definition, opposite sides need to be parallel. So I know this has a slope of zero, all right, because I'm going my y's, zero minus zero over negative a minus b, all right? Well, that's going to just be a slope of zero, so I need a slope of zero. Over here, well, my y point is c. Well, if I want my final answer, my final slope to be 0, well, this y also has to be c. So I know, because these are parallel, that my y value is c. All right, so now I can say that these are parallel. And then I can also use the slope of this. The slope of this line is well, I'm going to go up c and then over a. OK, so the slope of this c over a. So I know that the slope of this needs to be c over a. Well, luckily I've gone up c, all right? And from this point, I need to go over a. So from here to here, that distance has to be a. Well, we need to figure out this distance over here from that point. Oh, well look, it's b. So I know that this whole distance is b this from here to here is B, from here to here is A, so I know my point is B plus A. You could also use um, 
opposite sides are congruent as well because we know from here to here it's B. We know from here to negative A the distance would just be A so it's A plus B or B plus A, either one um, is commutative.